today is it the 20th march 1998 <clears throat> our talk today is the last talk in this three weeks retreat <clears throat> In this talk, <clears throat> I think I should deal with how a meditator goes through all 13 stages of our insight, knowledges, and attain the enlightenment very briefly. <clears throat> so that <clears throat> meditator knows his way <clears throat> to the cessation of a suffering. <clears throat> there are seven kinds of uh, purification which a meditator has to go through in the course of his meditation and also 13 stages of uh, insight and knowledge and the four stages of uh, enlightenment Thirteen stages of insight, knowledge, are mundane. Four stages of enlightenment are super mundane. <clears throat> when a meditator is about to practice meditation, first of all, he need to purify his morality, to purify morality, a purification of a morality is the basic requirement for every meditator, either Samantha meditator or Vipassana meditator. <clears throat> Only when morality is purified, he feels clear conscience and happy with his deed and speech, which is very much conducive to the concentration and insight knowledge that Meditator is to attain. <clears throat> That's why meditator needs to have purified morality. Puri to purify one's morality, one has to observe precepts, such as a five or a precept. For Buddhist monks, there are 227 rules of monastic court, which are known as the Pati Mokha Samarasila. <clears throat> but for laity, at least the five precepts should be observed if it is a possible. A precepts should be observed. That's why our meditators observed a precept. By observing the precepts, deed and speech are purified. <clears throat> 
by observing the precepts meditators have wholesome deed and wholesome speech when deed and speech becomes a wholesome then morality is purified based on purification of our morality meditator began to practice his meditation here our meditators began to practice their vipassana meditation insight meditation <clears throat> be mindful of whatever arises in our body and mind as it really occurs <clears throat> when the mindfulness becomes sharp and powerful then gradually concentration becomes deep <clears throat> thoughts become less and less then when concentration is a well that the mind the mind is a well concentrated on any mental states of physical process gradually hindrances the five kinds of hindrances nivaranas <clears throat> becomes a spasm then with the deeper concentration none of uh, hindrances <clears throat> can come into the mind so the concentrated mind expelled all of these hindrances for the time being of what as long as the mind is concentrated well on the object of meditation then this state of meditation is called purification of the mind because the mind is well absorbed into the object either mental states or physical process which is observed there may be some thoughts the meditator realizes the thought <coughs> quickly and note it then the thought passes away in this way concentration becomes a deeper deep and deeper so the mind is purified from hindrances and defilements it's a called a purification of a mind citta visuddhi purification of a morality is a called a sila visuddhi that's the first one the second one is a purification of a mind citta visuddhi since the mind becomes a purified from hindrances and defilements the insight that arises together with <clears throat> concentrated mind becomes a penetrating in shaf so it begin to begins to realize nama and rupa mental phenomena and physical phenomena it begins to differentiate between mentality and physicality it begins to differentiate between the note and my and the object 
it begins to differentiate between subject and object. When meditators mind is well concentrated on the rising movement and falling movement of the abdomen. He come to differentiate the process of a rising movement and the process of falling movement. At the beginning of the practice, before his mind is not concentrated well, he cannot differentiate between the rising movement and falling movement. <clears throat> he thinks the rising and falling process are one and the same. When concentrations are deep enough, he comes to realize the abdomen rises and then disappeared. Immediately after it is disappears, the abdomen falls, then disappears. In this way, the beginning and the end of the uh, rising process and the beginning and the end of a uh, fallen process is perceived very clearly. So, Meditita <clears throat> comes to realize rising process and falling process are no one and the same. They are the two different processes. Then it's at this stage of a meditation that he realizes the note in my and the rising movements, the note in my and the fallen movement. He comes to realize uh, rising movements is a one process, the note in my is another process. Fallen movement is a one process and the note in my is another process. In this way, the process of uh, rising and falling movement, physical phenomena, and the process of a no, uh, the note in mind, mental phenomena, he comes to differentiate. When the concentration becomes a deeper, he comes to realize that the specific uh, individual characteristics of the rising movement and falling movement, the individual characteristics of the note in my. <clears throat> I have explained to you how a meditator realizes the specific or individual characteristics of uh, the Vyoda do air element, which is a rise and fall in movement. <clears throat> so this stage of uh, MSI knowledge is uh, called Namarupa Prichiranyana, the MSI knowledge discerning Nama and Rupa mental phenomena and physical phenomena. In the same way, when you observe painful sensation, gradually the mind becomes more and more concentrated on the pain. You are patient with the pain and continue to observe it more attentively. The more attentively you observe the pain, the deeper concentrations becomes. Then you come to realize 
the pain is a one process, and the note in mind, the mind that notes it, another process. Here, meditator, differentiate between the two types of nama. One is the note in mind, the other is the unpleasant feeling or sensation, which is also nama, mental phenomena. Then he comes to realize the pain as just pain, unpleasant sensation. Sometimes he realizes the pain separate from his body, <clears throat> as his self. Sometimes he is not aware of uh, the location of the pain. Sometimes he is not aware of a self or body or my uh, body or person. What he realizes at that moment is just an unpleasant sensation, pain. There also he, he <clears throat> realizes that the pain is just an unpleasant sensation. The, the mind that notes it, mental phenomena, which is also separate process. And then again, he comes to realize that the pain is a neither a person nor a being, neither me or nor mine. It's a just an unpleasant sensation. This is stage of psychology knowledge is called Nama Rupa Brajita Jnana. The insight knowledge of discerning Nama and Rupa, or differentiating between Nama and Rupa. In the same way, when you are mindful of our daily activities are very attentively and carefully and precisely. Gradually, the mind concentrated on each movement or action. Suppose you observe stretching movement and bending movement of the arm very precisely and closely. So you follow the movements of a stretching very closely with mind. Then you come to realize um, this is the just process of a movement. It's a neither a person nor a being. Sometimes you lost the sense of uh, the arm. What you are realizing is the just movement. That's why you are that too. Because uh, you realize it as <clears throat> just a natural pro pro process of uh, movements. You do not identify it with a person, a being, with yourself, with me or mine. So in this way, realization of meant uh, physical phenomena, why or that to the movement, the process of stretching movement, removes the idea of a, a person, a being, a self, or a soul. Sakaya deity is destroyed. This is also called the insight knowledge that realizes <coughs> that this, uh, the insight knowledge of discerning Nama and Rupa. In the same way, when you walk, gradually you are concentrating on the movement of the foot becomes deeper and deeper. Then you come to perceive the actual movement of lifting very well, actual movement of pushing, actual movement of dropping. 
with the deeper concentration you are not conscious of the shape of the food but you are realizing it's just movements then you do not identify that movement with yourself or with the person of being so realization of a lifting movement pushing movement dropping movement is very uh, Uh, removes the idea of a person of being self or so sagadiri adatiti this is also the inside knowledge of the discerning nama rupa mental and physical phenomena when he <coughs> proceed to with it with this practice with this tenuous effort enthusiastically and ardently observing each mental states of physical process attentively then the concentration becomes deeper and deeper and here you have to observe intention some intention before some actions and movement and the daily activities and also and the walk in to intention lifting intention pushing intention dropping touching intention pressing and so on. when you find the intention very clearly and see it is separate from the movement suppose the intention to lift is a one thing and the lifting movement to the other intention to push it forward is one thing and a pushing movement is another process then you come to realize only when intention arises the the foot is lifted only if when the intention arises the foot is pushed forward only when the intention arises and the foot is dropped down in the same way in this stage of insight and knowledge also you feel when you note the intention before you do not make any effort to lift the foot the foot is lifted by itself in the same way when you note the intention the foot is pushed forward by itself sometimes it is it is pushed forward very long as you can control it <clears throat> when he note have no tendency then the foot should drop it by itself then in the beginning of this experience you are surprised at your experience because before that you have to put some effort to lift the foot to push it forward to drop it down now without your effort as soon as the intention arises then the foot is lifted by itself in the same way as soon as the intention is noted the foot is pushed forward it means uh, at that moment you do not identify either intention or movement with a person or being or yourself you are just realizing the two process intention and movement they are also the two separate processes 
Then you come to judge. It's the intention that causes the lifting of the foot. So intention is a cause, lifting, lifting movement is the effect. In the same way, intention is the cause, lifting, pushing movement is the effect. Intention is the cause, dropping movement effect. You come to realize this is called inside knowledge of a causal relation or inside knowledge of so conditionality, cause and effect. In the same way, when you observe the intention, daily activities before actions, movements, you know, intending, sitting down, sitting down, intending, rising, rising from the seat, and so on. There also, when you are Concentrations are good enough that you come to realize it's the intention that causes the action. It's the intention that causes the movements and so on. Here also the, you come to realize a cause and effect, cause a relation or conditionality. This is called uh, the inside knowledge of a condition Pachiya Prakhanyana. And the same way, you come to realize sometimes your rise and fall in movement is very distant. You can note it very well, very clearly. Rise and fall in, rise and fall in. But sometimes the rise and fall in disappeared. Then you can note rise and falling. At the moment, you become uh, the puzzled, what should you note? Because uh, the rising movement and falling movement has disappeared, you can't find it. <coughs> Later on, you come to hear a sound of voice and then not hearing, hearing. And you come to know your mind is thinking about the disappearance of uh, rise and fall, and that you know to thinking, thinking, thinking. Then after you have noted a thought process, and you may find the rising and falling again. It appears again. Then you note rising, falling, rising, falling. Here also you come to, you come to vaguely realize that only we have a rising movement, we can note rising. Only we have falling movement, we can note falling. When there's a no rising movement, we can note falling, rising. When we don't have a falling movement, we can note falling. It means that when there's the object rising movement and falling movement, there arises the mind that notes it. So the object rising movement and falling movement is the cause, the note in mind is effect. In this way here also you come to realize causal relation or conditionality or cause and effect. This is called sabrikhanyana, the inside knowledge of <clears throat> conditionality. When you proceed with your prat pratism <clears throat> with a deeper concentration then you come to have uh, some painful sensation. Then you have to note a pain, pain, pain. But this uh, painful sensation you had in the second knowledge, uh, the first and the second two. But though you had have uh, at the first stage of knowledge and the second stage of knowledge, 
you cannot the observe the painful sensation very well. Now, when here, when the painful sensation becomes a very distinct, your concentration also deeper because you have gone through two stages of insight. So you observe the pain, be impatient with it, pain, pain, pain. And also, your mind goes out and thinks about some pictures, such as forest, or trees, or the human beings, or ghosts, or devas, or monks, any mental image is created by your thought. It comes up in your mind, but you think <clears throat> these mental images comes into your mind by uh, of, it, of their own accord. But actually, it's not so. When the mind goes out and that mind, that thought, brings uh, these mental images into the mind, so you see it. But you have to note, see and see and see and see, because you see them until they have disappeared. If you realize that the thought before it creates these mental pictures, if you note, you note wondering, wondering, or thinking, thinking, until the thought has disappeared. After it has disappeared, you return to the primary object, rise and falling. Or when you feel pain, note pain, 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 and so on. So in <coughs> With the great patience, you have to observe the pain, you have to be mindful of the pain more attentively. Then sometimes gradually the pain becomes decreasing. And it, uh, after some time, the pain becomes a disappeared. Here, you come to realize the beginning of the pain, the middle of the pain, and the end of the pain. You come to realize the painful sensation <coughs> in the beginning, at the middle, and the end. Sometimes, uh, before one painful sensation has to disappear, another pain has to uh, arise. At that time also you have to know another pain which is more predominant. Later on, with the deeper and deeper concentration, the painful sensation disappeared when it's noted attentively. Then here you come to realize the arising of the pain and disappearance of the pain. Arising of each, each sensation, disappearance of it. In this way, you come to judge. Though the pain arises and becomes severe, but eventually it passes away. So it's a impermanent. In the same way, when you <clears throat> observe the rising and falling movement of the abdomen, you come to realize them. In the process of rising, two or three movements. In the process of falling, you come to realize that two or three movements. Rising, 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 uh, falling, falling, falling. Here also, you come to realize that the rising movement and the falling movement are no one and the same. The rising movement is not the a single process. It has 
it is a composed of of uh, the three movement or four movement and so on. In the same way, when you observe the movement of the food and the walking meditation, you come to realize that when you lift the food, you come to realize that lifting, 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 about two or three movements. In the same way, when you observe the pushing movement, you find or you realize that pushing, 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 three or four movements, and so two or three movements, and so on. Here also, what you find is um, the movements are not permanent. One movement after another arises and passes away. <clears throat> but it's vaguely, in this way, here, in this stage of inside knowledge, whatever you know, you come to realize the beginning, the middle, and the final phase of the object. You come to clearly realize that the disappearance of the object, either mental stress or physical process. So here you come to realize the impermanence, suffering or unsatisfactoriness <clears throat> and the impersonal nature of mental phenomena, physical phenomena, which are observed. This knowledge is called insight knowledge of a comprehension. Means compre the 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 insight knowledge comprehends all three characteristics of a phenomena, a nature, dukkha, another impermanent, suffering, impersonal nature. With the deeper concentration, you proceed with your practice. Then gradually, the this uh, painful sensation becomes uh, subsided, decreasing, decreasing. You have a little pain your concentration becomes better and deeper. Your mindfulness also sharp and powerful. Your effort also consistent and strong enough. Then, at this stage of inside knowledge, the, the mind is more deeply concentrated on any mental states of physical process. When the mind becomes concentrated, you feel tranquil, rapture, happy, because the mind is concentrated on <coughs> this mental state, uh, any mental state of physical process which is observed. Then the mind becomes clearer and clearer. We can say the mind becomes uh, as if it transparent. Then you see uh, some kind of a light which is associated with the insight. Sometimes you see the light like a fluorescent. Sometimes you see the light like the stars, and sometimes you see the light, the radiance of the moon. Sometimes you see the light, like the headlight of a car, and so on. Sometimes you feel you are sitting and practicing meditation, overwhelmed by the cool rays of the the moon and so on. In this way, you find the light. Then you note see and see and see and see. When you feel happy, note happy, happy. When you feel note uh, tranquil, you know tranquil, tranquil. When you feel <coughs> rapture, note rapture, rapture, and so on. In this way very subtle 
and very sublime happiness, rapture, and thrilling sensation is felt at this stage of Sai knowledge. Your mindfulness is also very, very good. It's ready to observe any object arising. <coughs> Energy is also strong and uh, consistent. Then you are happy with this uh, HP, this experience uh, at this stage. Then you are attached to this good experience. That attachment is called Nikanti. But not strong attachment, it's a very supply and subtle and weak attachment to what you have been experiencing in this stage. And also you you feel equanimity, that means um, you need not to put any effort to observe any object, or you need not to put any object to realize uh, the, the nature of our mental states or physical process. As if uh, you are noting my, it's uh, as if without the effort, so your your notemis and neither tense nor legs. This state of uh, equanimity is also very clearly felt. It's uh, you are attached to this equanimity also. Then when you attach have the attachment as you should note it, attachment, 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 whatever attachment, <coughs> whatever you are attached to must be noted as attachment, attachment, until the attachment has disappeared. Sometimes um, this is stage of inside knowledge um, is uh, very much attractive because <coughs> The, the experience in this stage is a very, very good and very, very enjoyable. So meditator sometimes think he has attained Nibbana. So he try enjoy it, then he is attached to it. Then he can't, uh, he is not able to observe any object, sometimes uh, he forgot to note. Then, <coughs> because of his knowledge of um, the, his holding of a Dhamma, or because of uh, the instruction given by his teacher, he comes to realize that this, realize this is not the final goal of a meditation. It's uh, the corruption and inside meditation. Unless we, unless I am able to note attachment, I won't be able to go up. I won't be able to proceed with our higher stages of our insight. Rightly understand in this way, you have to note whatever attachment it may be, or whatever happiness or rupture maybe you note, then you come to past this, uh, the states and your mind becomes uh, stable and calm and tranquil. Concentrations become better. The mind, the insight becomes a sharper and more penetrating. Then it realizes <clears throat> the rising and falling movement very clearly. One movement after another very clearly. Sometimes he, you come to realize them. 
a series of movement and a process of rising and falling, one after another, rising, passing, one after another, in the same way. In the walking meditation too, you come to realize a, a series of uh, tiny broken movements, separate movements of the food. But actually you are not aware of uh, not aware of uh, the form of uh, the food, the shape of the food. What you are realizing is just a series of movements rising, uh, rising and passing away, one after another. Now here, you come to realize <coughs> rising and passing away of uh, physical phenomena. In the same way, you come to realize the note in mind, such as the light, the rapture, happiness, tranquility, equanimity, and so on. But uh, later, but second part of uh, this uh, knowledge, uh, you come to clearly see a rising and passing away of uh, mental and physical phenomena. With the deeper concentration, you proceed with your concentration, uh, your, with your practice. Later on, the concentrations become better and better, stronger and stronger. Mindfulness is also very, very sharp and powerful. Then you come to realize uh, the disappearance of uh, rising and falling movements, each individual rising movement and falling movement. In the same way, disappearance of uh, the note in mind. You note one object, the mind note, the mind notes it and disappeared. Your realization doesn't lay stress on arising, it lays stress on dissolution, vanishing, disappearance. Whatever you note, it disappears. Whatever you note, it disappeared. So, in this way, you come to realize the solution of the object very quickly, very rapidly, and very clearly. Some at that time, most of the time you lost the form or the shape of uh, the object. What you are realizing is a dissolution, vanishing, disappearance. So you are not at that time, sometimes you are not satisfied with your experience because you did not find any form or shape of the phenomena. What you are realizing is a disappearance and dissolution and so on. Sometimes you have lost the physical form. There is a, is a, what, a le, what is left is a just a consciousness. Then you have to note knowing, 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 knowing. But the, the consciousness also vanishes and rises and vanishes and rises in this way. This is a called the inside knowledge of a dissolution. We call it the Banganyana. The the third jnana, inside knowledge of a comprehension is called the Samasana jnana. The fourth one, the inside knowledge of a right, arising and passing away is called the Udhyabhya jnana. Now this is the fifth one, is inside knowledge of uh, dissolution, is Banganyana. After that, you have to observe mostly disappearance and dissolution of uh, dissolution of the object. So you have the you feel uh, as a these things are fearful because they are all the time very instantly vanishing, vanishing, disappearing, disappearing, and so on. So that f 
feeling of uh, the fear or that aspect of a fearfulness or awareness of fearfulness is called Bhayanyana, the inside knowledge of uh, fearfulness. And then you can, because you feel these are <coughs> all the time vanishing, dissolution, so they are not good. You want to, uh, you, you are not satisfied with this state of uh, phenomena. So you feel misery, all oh, these things are miserable. Then your mind is not bright and active. It becomes uh, relaxing, and uh, you feel dismay. This is uh, called uh, the inside knowledge of a uh, misery. Then after that, because uh, you have experienced uh, disappearance and dissolution of uh, these mental and physical phenomena, you find fault with them and you take you have uh, you want to get rid of it rid of uh, this mental and physical phenomena you feel a desire to liberate from these this mental and physical phenomena which are <coughs> all the all the time vanishing dissolution in this stage of insight you Though you have not <coughs> the, uh, though you have uh, good experiences, that means uh, deep concentration and sharper mindfulness. But you can't sit a long time. Say you sit about uh, fifty minutes, and then you want to change your position. Uh, you want to get up and practice walking meditation. In the walking meditation, you can't stay in long. So, say about 20 minutes or so, you want to sit down and so on. That means uh, you are not satisfied with uh, the experience of uh, these uh, disappearance and vanishing of a mental and physical phenomena, you want to get rid of it. <clears throat> this is called Mosji to Kamiyata Jnana. The meaning is the inside knowledge of a desire for deliverance. Then when you proceed with your practice, you have um, the many varieties of a painful sensation again. The painful sensation arises very severely, very strong. You have to put some more effort in order to observe it. Sometimes you can bear it. You want to get up, you want to change your position, but you do not change it. You do not get up. You perseveringly persistingly observe the pain. Then later on the pain disappeared abruptly, suddenly. Then another pain comes out, you note it, it disappeared abruptly. Then another pain comes and then you note it, it disappears instantly and so on. There in this way you <coughs> have to review the impermanence, suffering, impersonal nature of a mental physical phenomena which you experience at the stage, the third stage of insight, insight knowledge of comprehension. Now you have to <coughs> re-observe it or re-note it, re-contemplation, contemplate what it is so that these mental states and physical process are actually <coughs> uh, 
not everlasting, not permanent. They arise and then buried incidentally pass away. You come to realize them. It's called insight knowledge of reobservation. Then after this stage, you come to the best stage of insight knowledge. At this stage, you have sometimes no pain at all. Sometimes you may have a little pain, but you are Mindfulness is very sharp. Concentration is deep. Effort is strong and consistent by itself. You need not put any effort to observe any object. The, the mind observes the object by itself. Then whatever the object may be, you note it, then you come to realize it disappear, arising and passing away of the object. Either mental states or physical process becomes rapid and quick. You have sometimes you have to look at it. You need uh, you do not level it. You do not note it. Just observe it. Just perceive it rising and passing away of phenomena. Here, your concentration is <clears throat> very deep. Sometimes some of the meditators sent out their mind to outside object, but the mind doesn't go to the object. It, it's like an elastic. It comes back to the, the object rise and fall in movement, or any mental series of physical process. Here in this stage, you feel neither happy nor unhappy. Even though you find any object which is pleasant and inviting, but you are not attached to it, you are not happy with it, what you, sh what you do is just observe it, then that object has disappeared. So in this way, <clears throat> your mind becomes uh, the stay at the middle of uh, happiness and uh, unhappiness. So it's uh, called uh, inside knowledge of our equanimity, Sankarupa Kanyana. Then, when the Sankarupa Kanyana becomes a major, you come to attain the inside knowledge of adaptation and knowledge of maturity, Anulomanyana and Godrabunyana, and then you get hit into the path of knowledge you realize it's a divide of a suffering at the moment. Then you attain to the first path of knowledge, Sota Pati Maganyana. When you have attained Sota Pati Maganyana, the knowledge of us, uh, enlightenment of a stream entry, then that jnana, that enlightenment uproots. The round view of a personality, Sakaya Deity, individual D self or soul. And uh, <clears throat> the, the round view of the attachment to rice and ritual, ritual it's called a Silapata Brahmas, Brahmasa. And also, that enlightenment uproots the skeptical doubt about the triple gems. Because this is strict skeptical doubt has been uprooted by the first enlightenment, your sadha faith is firm and strong. It can never be shaken by any any other doctrine or anyone. 
because uh, you yourself uh, experience uh, the inside knowledge and experience here the Four Noble Truths. <clears throat> this is called say, Sotapatimaga Jnana, the dream entry knowledge or enlightenment. When you proceed with your practice, you may be able to attain the higher stages of insight, higher stages of enlightenment. Sakada Gami Maga, Anagami Maga, Radha Maga. When you have attained Sakada Gami Maga, the second stage of enlightenment, you become Sakada Gam, Sakada Gami, non Ritana. Uh, sorry, once Ritana. It means uh, after you have attained the second enlightenment, you may you will be reborn in the higher world, such as Deva and Brahma, but you may come once, only once to this sensuous world, karma, existence. <clears throat> that Sagadagami Maga, that the second enlightenment eradicates <clears throat> Uh, not eradicate, it weakens the sensuous desire or craving and ill will, dosa, kamaraka and dosa. When you have attained the third enlightenment, anagami mega, you come to anagam, non ritana you won't never, you will never come to sensuous existence, it means. This third enlightenment uproots <coughs> sensuous craving or sensuous craving or desire and ill will completely. Kamaraga and dosa. Then when you have attained the final enlightenment of Arhatshya, all mental defilement has been completely uprooted, eradicated, eliminated by this final enlightenment. Then you become Rahan and your mind is completely purified from all mental defilements, hindrances and negative mental states so you live in peace and happiness. This is the final goal of a meditator. At least you should aim at the attainment of the first stage of enlightenment, so the Patimakanyana. With that enlightenment and you, your mind, you should strive your best. But you need enough effort and enough time. But Ten days meditation, two weeks meditation, three weeks meditation is not enough to attain any, at least the lowest stage of enlightenment. So the Patimaganyana, not enough. When your inside knowledge becomes mature, you have to stop and go home back. Then again, you you came to another 10 days retreat or two weeks retreat, then you start from the beginning and go up gradually. When the concentrations are deep enough and the some experience and some inside knowledge, then you stop and go home back. <laughs> so <clears throat> you need enough effort and enough tie for attainment of what these uh, four stages of enlightenment, at least the lowest stage of enlightenment. Uh, five minutes have passed. So I think it's enough. <coughs> the Now 
I very briefly explained to you the 13 stages of inside knowledge and the four stages of enlightenment. You may find some experience you have had in your meditation is the in conformity with the point I mentioned in this, this discourse. Then you can know where you are. <laughs> so then you have to proceed with your practice for long journey. <laughs> May all of you try your best <clears throat> and attain the final stage of enlightenment and became Arahant.